Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm going to list the five things that I hate about the Ganam Spider F3. Reality is I don't hate anything about it. There's some things that I wish were better and some of them have already been improved. So, uh, so that's a good thing, right? Uh, and today's video in the background is Hurley Throttle Juice, uh, Roger and Rochelle, uh, HTJ, fantastic channel if you're not watching that channel you're missing out fan look at those guys absolutely fantastic they do some uh, great the scenery the the quality of the content the the music fantastic i'll put a link below great guys from the last video i did the five things that i love about the can-am spider f3 dfw uh, spider moose he uh, commented that his number one was it's fun I think he's right it's it's a lot of fun but let's go with the five things that I wish were a little different uh, number five is the um, some of the accessories that you need to add like um, like the fog lights on an f3 there's there the places are already there for them they've got blanks in there and um, you have to, and I think it's already wired if I remember right, it, I don't think, I think it, the wiring was already there too, which is nice. I mean, that's a plus really, except that you have to add them. I wish that it was already on there. Uh, and maybe, maybe if you get the limited model, you automatically get them, you know, maybe the base model wouldn't have them, but would have the blanks. I, I think that would be, uh, a, a nice thing. Adding the Baja Ron Sway Bar. Everybody that's done it talks about how great it is, and uh, and I have it, and, and I'm going to add it. And that when I watch videos on people installing them and showing the difference, you know, it's a much thicker sway bar. And you would think after all these years, maybe Ken Am would have just, you know, improved the sway bars that they or anti sway bars that they put on there. Uh, so so that's that's a that's a couple of things there. Number four is the the plastics that they use. Now, when I think back on the Hondas and Suzukis and um, uh, Yamahas that I own, they had cheap plastic on them too. Uh, you don't really see that as much with the Harley or, or the uh, or the Indians. Um, but um, so, you know, not really knocking Can Am that much for that. But uh, some things weren't exactly perfectly even, and you know, these things come in on a crate. So I imagine the uh, the dealer that puts them together is. To, to blame for some of the, the a little bit of unevenness. Um, but I wish that, I guess that QC process was a little better. Um, you know, the, uh, the, here's one thing that they did improve, but, but not on mine is that trunk that, uh, when you open it, 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 it's, it's pretty flimsy when it opens, it clicks. There's a little plastic piece that click locks it up and then you have to release it to put it down. Uh, I don't like that, uh, but now I understand. I'm not sure about the 2020 models, but the 2021s for sure have struts now. So you just open and close it. But yeah, my dealer told me when I bought that bike, he said, look, you came from a Harley, and so you're used to putting that thing down uh, and uh, not having to push anything, you know? And he said, that's the number one thing that gets broken from uh, from old Harley guys is, is they're just click it i think again i think i mentioned that in the at least the spider walk around i did um and they have improved that so good for you brp for that that's uh that's a uh, you probably saw uh, an influx of orders for those things to, re to 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 repair those but yeah that was a good thing uh i, I do think after walking around some of the newer models uh, uh I, I do like them i think they've improved several things with them uh, so my number three thing is no manual available for the uh, F3 Limited. I personally would have rather had a manual, although riding with the semi-automatic is fantastic. Uh, you know, it, it shifts smooth, it's easy. Uh, I just like a manual. I've driven, you know, ridden, and even most of my, I always have a manual car, it seems like, uh, except for right now. But, um, uh, so I, I've, I've always liked manuals. I like that extra bit of control in it. Uh, so. I wish the manual was available. Uh, now, my wife, Mrs. 602, 
uh, would only want the semi-automatic. So see, there's there's the give and take. Had I gotten a manual, she wouldn't be riding it at all. Uh, I would even probably have considered it. So, uh, but but I do wish a manual was available. Okay, my number two thing is dealer support. Now I've got three dealers within 30 minutes of me. Um, uh, the one I bought from was the smallest, and they did give me great, great, uh, a great deal, and and uh, the the sale process was was really good. Uh, the other two, uh, the one, the largest one, uh, the sales process was horrible, and I, I was standing there with cash in my hand and uh, walked away. So uh, it was it was that bad. The, the the sales lady that was trying to help me, I was asking questions. She was more interested in texting on her cell phone so every time i would look and say what about she would have her phone up and and be be texting and she really didn't pay attention to me at all that and i asked if i could demo ride it around the the parking lot and she said that uh they don't allow that but if i bought it and i didn't like it i could bring it back and the dealer would give me my money back for it. well you know that's not how things work uh once you buy it your name's on the title it's now you know, it's already owned by one person. Now there'd be a second owner for it, right? If they sold it, so uh, uh, so I walked away from that dealer. Uh, the other dealer, um, the third dealer, um, they didn't have any spiders. They were sold out. Uh, the thing that turned me off about that dealership is I asked them if they'd put the Baja Run sway bar on for me, uh, and uh, they said that if I just leave the bike there. They would, um, they would get to it. You know, maybe two weeks may may take up to two weeks. But I noticed that the other customer bikes they had, and it's a pretty large place, uh, were sitting outside, and, and I didn't like that. I didn't want you know, if my bike's kind of want my can, I'm sitting out there for two two weeks, up to two weeks outside. So uh, that uh, that kind of turned me off from those guys. Uh, you know, my dealer. They're not that fast because they're over by the lake and they do a lot of sea do business. Uh, and they do a lot of Can Am um, uh, ATV business too. Uh, but they're, they're great people and I do have a trust, a bit of trust with those guys. Uh, and they will be putting my sway bar in, uh, and servicing my Can Am here in the next couple weeks. Um, mostly because I haven't gotten it over there. Um, yeah, the weather's been kind of crappy. I wanted to do this while riding, but it's crappy. We're now we're respecting snow. So, um, and so the number one thing that I dislike about my Can Am F3 is the BRP app. Now, DFW Spider Moose, uh, and I'll put a link for his video down below. He did a great video on how to use the BRP Go app. Uh, you know, he simplified it and. Uh, and I'm still yet to try it. I did download it on my phone. I just haven't went down to the garage and connected it. But at this point, I've found workarounds for it that, that work better for me. It seems like there's a, a little bit of a process you have to go through to connect it where really I've got it connected to Bluetooth. So when I get on the bike and crank it up within a minute, you know, my Bluetooth kicks in and I can play my music. I can still control my music from the screen. You know, it has that split screen. Uh, and um, they, uh, you know, it's a cool selling point when you see your map on the screen, when it splits the screen and you have the map there, but you have to buy those things. So those those apps that go with the F3, uh, I guess with any of the, the limited models that have that screen, uh, you have to buy them. Uh, and I've got, you know, I've got Waze and Google Maps and Apple Maps on my phone, and I have that mount right there in the middle of the handlebars. So, uh, and with the Bluetooth, it's going to work with my helmet or my speakers. Um, so it just connects. I don't have to do anything. I just get on and, uh, you know, and maybe I map it. I guess I map it on my phone before. If I was to use that, that that's the way I would do it. Um, you know, it's always up to date. It's giving you traffic information that you're not going to get. Um, as far as I know with some of these other apps and I don't have to pay for those apps uh, So that's really my number one. I'm not uh, you know again that that was a selling point So if you go to BRP site and look at well, I'm gonna stick something up here. 
or I did stick something up here so that you guys could see what it looked like. It's super cool. I like high tech stuff, so I, I like those things. Uh, but you know, having done this now with, um, having went through this with this uh, BRP uh, app and, and those things, um, you know, I was looking at street glides, challengers, I always the big screen was a selling point for me on those two. Uh, and now I'm thinking I'd just be happy with the smaller radio on a street glide uh, and not all that stuff um, and probably save some money that way. So, you know, in, in my in my series on what RJ will have next, you'll see some of that uh, come to life. So that's my five things. Thanks a lot, guys, for watching. One other thing, guys. So down below, you'll see a link to the Road Warrior Foundation. That's an organization that's near and dear to my heart. They take veterans out on these epic adventures on Can-Am Spiders. Um, they're actually supported by BRP, as far as I know. And um, fantastic organization. Well worth a look. So thanks a lot, for guys, for watching.